Hello, hi. Um, so that's me, and I work at Booking.com, where we are looking for a lot of people. And I also organize meetups in the Netherlands, uh, the meetup group called NL HTML5. If you're ever in the Netherlands, let me know. Um, this is my talk, and it's, it was going to be a talk about ES 2016, which makes sense, but when I submitted the talk, there was going to be three features in, in ES 2016, and they killed one of them, so either my talk was going to be five minutes, or I changed it a, bit, a little bit. So what do you want, the five minute talk, or a better version? <laughs> Great, that's, what, that's the one I have. Um, so before I wanna talk about ES 2016, let me tell you a little bit about the specification and how it came to be and how it's continuing forward. So ECMA 262 is the specification for ECMAScript. It's, um, that's how it's called right now. But back in uh, 1995, uh, the, the JavaScript was first introduced. It, it was created in 10 days by uh, Brendan Eich, um, and he called it Mocha, but Mocha didn't really sound very good, and he wanted to call it a little bit better, so he wanted to call it JavaScript. Um, but back then he was working at uh, Netscape, which the logo actually looked a little bit more like this. Uh, <laughs> so, he wanted to call it JavaScript because Java was a popular language, so he made a deal with Sun to call it JavaScript. Uh, and in the announcement, to give you a little bit of feeling on what they wanted to do with JavaScript, it said that JavaScript will be the most effective method to connect HTML-based content to Java applets. So back then, Java applets were big, and JavaScript was not so big. Um, so in March 1996, Netscape Navigator 2 came out and it had JavaScript and they wanted to uh, publish this to all, all the developers so they asked them to put this uh, button on their website and thus the browser wars began. <laughs> so later that year, Internet Explorer 3 came out and it had JScript, their own version of JavaScript. Uh, Brendan Eich didn't really like that there were m multiple versions of JavaScript so he asked the ECMA Corporation to make uh, a neutral specification, and they decided to call it ECMAScript because of legal reasons. Uh, to say it mildly, Brendan Eich didn't really like the name ECMAScript. He thought of it as an unwanted trade name that sounds a little bit like a skin disease. Uh, but it, it, it was ECMAScript, and a year later, version two came out. So it says here to align with the ISO specifications. It's also a strange thing, ISO came out, uh, had their own version of JavaScript, which you have to pay for to read. But they wanted to, the two to align, so uh, they created a new version, and then a year later, ES3 came out with regex and try-catch. Yearly iteration seems good, so let's continue on that and make one nine years later. <laughs> so the browsers evolved, the, the web evolved, and they wanted to add a lot of new features, but Browsers couldn't implement everything, so they abandoned it. And a year later, ES5 came out, um, which had fewer features. So we went from three to five, which is okay. So the next version is probably six. No, it's not. It was ES5.1, and again, to align with the ISO specifications. And then a year later, I mean four years later, ES6 came out. And now we finally learned something. It had also had a lot of stuff because the web evolved in four years. And they made a deal. They said, well, let's do yearly iterations from now on. And to make sure that we do, let's add the year of the, uh, add the version as well. So it's called ES 2015, sort of. So a year later, ES 2016 came out this year and it had not a lot of stuff. Two things, actually. Um, so how does this work? Well, there is a group called the TC39 uh, at ECMA, and they make these specifications. It's, it's a bunch of white guys sitting at a table talking about specifications. Um, and this guy, actually, this time I actually mean guys, so. But what do they do? Well, they uh, have a process in, which has five stages to talk about specifications and to uh, make them happen. The first stage is strawman, and strawman is uh, all kinds of freeform ideas that people have, have submitted and they talked about 
in the meetings and thought that it was, was reasonably okay to publish this online. And then you have stage one after they formally accepted the proposal, and which means that there's some sort of syntax and examples. Um, they then create a draft which has better syntax, semantics, and work, uh, maybe even a polyfill uh, as well. You have stage three, which is the candidate. The text is uh, spe specification text is complete, and it has uh, two implementations by user agents, which could mean that uh, it ha Chrome has one behind flags, or uh, Node.js has implemented this. And then if it's in stage four, it's ready for the standard. It means no changes are going to be made anymore, and it passes the unit as they set up. So this is a little bit how the, the process is. But now, um, where you're here for, it's ECMAScript 2016, or as I, how I like to call it, ECMA 2627th edition, the ECMAScript 2016 language specification. Uh, I use that in sentences a lot. It's, it's easy. Um, a small warning, which following slides will cont mostly contain codes, but that's why you're probably here, here for. So as I said, it had two features. Sorry, I, sometimes I talk a little bit fast, so if I'm going too fast, please raise your hand or something, um, because I noticed that I'm talking faster than I normally do. But first, the exponentiation operator, which is this. Is it readable? It's readable. Um, <laughs> this actually means uh, the same thing as this. So it's x to the power of y, which you can easily do to, to the power of two, uh, or you can do it like this, and then it means three to the power of three. Okay, that was feature one. See how fast it goes? So there's the exponentiation operator. Anyone want to take a guess on the support for that? Who thinks it's supported in Edge? No one, surprising. And Chrome? A few? Firefox? Nah. Safari? <laughs> How about Node.js? Okay, so it's supported in Edge 14. This is the new version, and for, uh, uh, Chrome 52, which is two versions from now. So that's the, the, the two implementations that they need to make it a finished version. Uh, oh, this is wrong, because it's also supported in Node, but I don't know why it doesn't show up. Sorry about that. Um, and then we have the second thing, that it's array.prototype.includes, which is also not a very interesting feature, but still useful. So we used to... If you want to find something in an array, you have to do index of A or D or whatever to find it. And if it's larger than minus one or so zero or bigger, then it's in the array. And it's, with includes, you can just easily find it like this. It has a little, big, some kind of differences as well. So. Uh, if you want to find another number with index of, it's hard to do that. With includes, it will work. And with uh, arrays like this, you can easily find if it has an undefined value. Some of you might think, OK, so why not contains? I thought it was called contains, because Mutuals. Uh, so Mutuals, they did something. They extended the prototype of array, and one of them was uh, contains, so they had to do includes. You can think of two uh, lessons learned by this. One is uh, never extend the prototype because that will give you problems with future specifications. The other is if you're big enough, the specifications will just fit to your need. So choose whatever you want to learn. <laughs> so. I'm not going to do this any, any, every time. So the support for this is actually pretty good. It's supported in most browsers and in future Edge as well, and even in Node. Um, so you can use this if you're just supporting the latest versions of the browsers. So, and no, oh, I'm almost at 10 minutes, so this was supposed to be my talk. Uh, this was the two features of ECMAScript 7. Um, so I'm extending it a little bit, and I'm going to talk about, well, the 8th edition, 
or the 2017 language specification. Well, not really because we don't know yet what's in the new version because it's still in different kind of stages and as I learned uh, the hard way, they can pull things out of the finished stage. Um, so I'll just talk about the stages then. So there's this, this finish stage, the things that we are probably having in uh, ES the, uh, the next year. Uh, it's object of values and object of entries, uh, string padding, object that get own property descriptors. Those are the three that are coming. Um, you can find that in this URL, which, well, I will share my slides so you can easily find that. So object of values and object of entries. Um, it's, it's also not that interesting, but so we, because we had this, this object of keys, which you can easily get the keys out of the, out of an object. So it's reasonable to have object as values as well. And if you want uh, both keys and values in an array, you can now use object of entries, which gives you a multidimensional array of, uh, well, of the entries, the keys and the values. And with that, you can easily loop through all the, uh, all the entries like this, which could be pretty useful in some cases. And support for this is actually pretty okay already. Um, actually, because it's finished, it already had to be two uh, implementations and Firefox latest version has it. Uh, Chrome has it behind Flex. That's why it's not pretty colors. And Edge has it in the next version. Um, so the second is string padding. I wanted to add a left pad joke here, but I couldn't think of anything. So string of padding is a way to add characters in front or after your string. And it has two para parameters. One is uh, the minimum length of the string, and the other is what you want to append or prepend it with. Um, so pad start uh, prepends the string, and pad end appends it to the string. You might think, well, why, we're in, why pad start and pad end? not left or right, and that's because uh, for support for right to left languages, so it will always do it be at the start of the string or the end of the string and not the left or right side. You can also uh, add multiple characters to the second parameter. Um, so if you want uh, ruler.js with, with a length of nine, it will be, in this case, ruler.js gsj. And if you omit the second parameter at pet start, which only works for pet start for some reason, uh, it will uh, prepend you, uh, it with spaces. So string padding, it has a couple of implementations. Um, strangely enough, Safari 10 also has this, which is the next version of Safari, which will come out in a few months probably. I don't know. Um, so the browsers are getting this pretty soon. I don't know for Node, I'm not really sure where to find what's coming next in Node because I'm not a Node developer and actually never done anything with Node, which sounds strange, but I never found a reason to. <laughs> um, and the other thing that's coming is uh, get on property descriptors, um, which mentioned the S because without the S we already had. So, what it actually does if you uh, try to get the property descriptors, the properties of uh, an object, you can call it like this, and you can get, you can get your, uh, uh, your object, which has all the uh, getters and setters in it as well, which is nice. And why is it nice? Well, you can do two things with that. Uh, one is copying properties into an object. You might think you can do that with a sign like this if you want to have one object which both things you can do object of the sign. Um, but if you have a, a, a setter or a getter in it, then if you use object of the sign, it will not show up because it's only uh, copy, it only assigns the normal properties, not the getters or setters. So you need the property descriptors to uh, put it in there and you can do that with object.define properties. And you can put the property descriptors in it like this. And the other thing is cloning objects, which you can easily do with object.create. You uh, put in the prototype and all the property descriptors, and then you have a clone of it. 
Um, this is a little bit less good supported. It has in Chrome and in Safari. Um, but I heard that Edge was also working on this. So that's, that's for stage four. Th those are the things that we're fairly sure are coming next year. Um, stage three is a little bit different. Uh, it, still needs, uh, uh, it still needs to pass all the unit tests. The spec text is not really completed yet. So that either is put on hold till the next year, how the year after next, or it, they will fix this. And it has a couple of cool things in it. These are a lot, a lot bigger improvements. Uh, one of is, is SIMD, which uh, it also has a polyfill for it. I will explain later what it is. It has the async functions, which was actually the other half of my talk before, I, before it was cut from this year's uh, version. It has trailing commas in functions, and it has the function that prototype that do string revision. I will tell you a little bit about the first three. Um, I will not tell you about the prototype that do string revision because um, I didn't have time to read the entire spec and they didn't have good examples for it. So if you want to learn a little bit about what's changing into string, then uh, I will give you a link at the end. So SIMD. Um, SIMD is, uh, is stands for single instruction multiple data. And uh, before I started these slides, I knew nothing about it. And I'm try going to try to explain in very basic language what it means. I'm probably very wrong. So um, I'm sorry about that. If I'm wrong, please point it, point it out to me. But there, if you, you can, if you have SISD, which means single instruction, single, single data, sorry, um, you can, and you have an array of, uh, of, uh, of numbers, you have two different arrays, and you want those arrays to add together, uh, SISD has to go through every, uh, every one of them one by one, while SIMD can do it the, all, um, for all, all at the same time, so you can, uh, well, I can explain a little bit of code. Say you have these, the first let has an array of uh, floats, and the second let has an array of floats, and you want to add that together. You can use floats 32x4.add, and they will all be uh, added to each other. So the, it will become 6, 8, 10, and 12. You can also uh, have a whole long list of booleans. Anyone, and if you want to see if any of them are true, you can use any true, and if all of them are true, you can use all true. Um, these kind of things are very good for uh, uh, graphics simulations or gaming or um, financial software. I will show you a little example about how good it will improve. So, so you have so you have this, uh, oh, you're not seeing anything. Sorry about that. Why doesn't it? Oh, of course. Which great way, uh, that way. So say you have this uh, um, Mendelbrot calculations. It will go very slow with, without SIMD. And if you turn on SIMD, so the calculations will be used through uh, SIMD, then you can see that the frame rate will go up pretty drastically, which is nice. Uh, so as I said, I know, don't know a lot about it, but if you're really into these uh, uh, graphics uh, things and maybe gaming, then it's good to take a look at it. Um, so I should go here. Support for it is very bad. It's an edge behind flex, but it's coming in, in, different, uh, uh, in different browsers pretty soon. Which, by the way, is actually pretty weird because it's, it's in stage three and it has to have two implementations and I fail to find any other implementation of it. So I don't know yet why that's it, that is, but that's probably going to change soon, I think. Uh, async functions, that's something that most of you are probably going to use. Well, I hope because I think it's pretty cool. Um, so let me 
walk back a bit. So say you wanted to do something async way back before promises and things like that, you had to have a callback. And so you want say you have this this timeout and after the timeout you want to do something after it, you do the you run the callback after the timeout, which is not really uh uh, user friendly and it's uh, uh, it's not very readable. So if you have this function that says do work and you run it, then the console log will first say start, then it will say the working that's at the, at the bottom, and then it will say uh, something as the, in the callback. So in came promises, which made it a little bit more readable. You can say do something async, then do this, which makes a little bit more sense. And now with async and await, you can actually uh, say async in front of the function. And in that function, you can await things. So in this case, I will say console.log start. And then I'll await while uh, the do something async is resolved. And then I will log the value that is returned from that do something async. Uh, if you have two of those uh, awaits in, it will just wait until each of them has finished. Um, this is, I think, is a lot more readable than what we used to have, and um, so it's. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, there's one thing though: if something fails at one of those awaits, it will fail silently, unless you have a try catch around it. So if you want to uh, catch those errors, you really have to use try catch. It will not even show up in your console. If you want to learn a little bit more about async await, because it's much bigger than I just uh, explained. Uh, you can go to this uh, uh, blog for, by Ponyfu, which has a lot of cool examples. Um, currently, surprisingly supported in Edge again, which m probably means that Edge is going to have a lot of features, um, and also not in any other user, uh, user agent yet. And finally, there is this trailing commas in function parameters, lists, and calls, which is how they call it in the, in the specs. Um, not really that interesting. I'm a little bit against it as well. So, say you have the, the, we already had trailing commas in objects and arrays, so you can do it like this. And then you can now do it in function parameter lists and calls as well. And why is that? Well, probably for, uh, okay, sorry. Uh, it's for, uh, what is it called? Sorry, uh, for things like Git, so they, version control, yeah, sorry. <laughs> a little bit of brain fart. <laughs> so if you want to uh, compare two different diffs with each other, it's, it's good, it's easier. And if you, for people who want to copy and paste things and strip things, uh, strip things out of the list, it's, it's easier if you have this. Um, this is also supported in Edge and also going to be supported in Safari. So those were the things that are most likely coming next year. Um, not all of the, the things in stage three, but the things in stage four, I'm pretty certain that's going to happen. Um, there are still a lot of things, and I will not go through all of them, because it, it has, actually has a lot of things. Uh, these are just, just in the, the, the draft, and then there is also a whole lot of things in the, in the proposals. Um, uh, this is one part, it's, and then there's a whole lot of other things and a lot of things from, and I will just go, no, you can just look them up on my uh, uh, slides later. Um, so one thing that I learned from this is that Edge 4 thing is probably going to be awesome because it supports all those things, so let's stop doing, let's start doing these <laughs> but, uh, things on our, our sites, please. And. Uh, if you want to look at all the compatibility tables, it's, uh, you can go to this, one, uh, this site. The status of the uh, uh, current specs is on that link. You can find all the uh, stages there. The specs themselves, you can find it there, and it's even worse to read those specs and it's to read the HTML specs, so I'm not really sure if you want to do that. And a lot of information is on Ponyfu and Tuality. 
And I want to leave you with one last thing. So let's please stop calling it ECMAScript X and start calling it JavaScript again. Those specifications are only needed for, uh, the, those version numbers are only needed for, for talks like this if you really want to say the specs. And we, I think we could just call it JavaScript and say if it's supported in our browser, we're, we're not calling thing, uh, saying, well, maybe this is supported in CSS scholars level four. So I think we could call JavaScript again, because otherwise it will take some time to get used to it. Um, so thank you. Um, as I said, I work at Booking.com. We have a, a looking for a lot of developers. I hope you like my slides. If you did not like my slides, I work at Expedia. Uh, <laughs> this is my Twitter handle. This is the Twitter handle for my meetup group. Uh, this is my email address. This is my ICQ number. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Well, any questions?